So I promised a case study. So let's talk about a customer, an organization that actually implemented this. So it's Tivoli Gardens. So it's the second oldest operating amusement park in the world. They just celebrated their 175th anniversary. But really like most amusement parks and a lot of your organizations, they had a very small IT department. They have two people in their IT department. Now, typically, when you go to an amusement park, you buy a day pass, maybe buy a two-day pass. But with Tivoli Gardens being in the center of the city, they decide to offer subscriptions to the park. The idea was people can quickly drop in, go for a couple of rides, then continue on with their day. Their challenge was once a person is a subscriber, once they've subscribed, and the subscription was coming up for renewal, they had no idea who was going to renew and who was going to drop off and why. So they could not predict the revenue stream and what kind of impact that would have for them. They had several different systems uh, that housed data and they had to figure out a way to bring all this data into a singular profile of a customer. Because unless they understand what a customer does, they're never gonna understand if the customer is going to renew or not. So. As I mentioned earlier, uh, my colleagues are going to send you a link to a two-minute video that you can watch later on after this presentation that shows all the hosts uh, giving a, um, a testimonial on what they're doing with the actual application. And I'm going to drive down into some details here for you. So customer insights. I promised I was going to show some of the screens and, uh, and talk about it. So when you start, you see here, for Tivoli, they saw the customer their members, so 189,000 members, they could see that 10,000 live in Copenhagen, 800 had their birthdays, 38 were likely to churn. So they, this is where you start. So this is the customer insight screen where you start. Now let's drill down in a bit more detail. So Tivoli wanted to ingest data from Azure, from Salesforce, from SharePoint list. They also had on-premise systems and through these gateway connectors, they were able to ingest the data within a, with a next, next, next action. So just pick them, basically go next, it'll, it brings all the data in together. So going back to the classic CRM implementation, this usually takes weeks, months, in some cases, multiple years. Typically did this in a matter of days. The ingesting part has, was super easy for them to do. The next thing was to bring in direct, the data directly into customer insights. So, uh, we've been working with CRM for years in our business. So every CRM project starts with ingesting data, but it's often expensive and required development. So Tivoli had nine different data sources where the customer data resided. They had GLX, for example, that showed them where a customer was specifically physically in the park, close to what service, close to what restaurant, close to what ride. Tivoli was already using Dynamics 365, so it was really easy for them to pull in about 16 entities into the system, but they were also using Sitecore for the website. They were using Falcon IO to track social information. They had Twitter, they had Facebook posts, they had a whole bunch of different inputs in there. They also used a system called Galaxy, with, with, which registers what ride the attendee went on. And they were able to bring and ingest all this data into customer insights very, very easily. So what was the next logical step for them? The AI screen. So once you've got your data sources uh, set up and pointed to, then you're going to the AI screen. So three steps, map, match, and merge. So imagine if I had nine different data sources that capture information about me, I could be different in each of those sources. You, could, you would need to make sense of that data to generate a distinct profile of Pierre Bertrand. So the built-in AI looks at all the data sources and provides a recommendation for a primary key between information where it doesn't exist. So this is very important. For, it recommends for you a primary key. So if I'm listed in one system as Pierre Bertrand, and Pierre H. Bertrand in another one, and P. Bertrand, there's nothing linking me together. So we need that primary key to link the tables together. So this is as simple as going to the screen, once you've mapped it, the system is going to recommend out of the box for you what the system, what the uh, the uh, key should be. So it's it's as simple as verifying that I believe the connections are correct. And of course, if you want, you can override it and change your primary key. Now 
Now comes the match and merge piece, which is really a lot of the power within the solution. So, my name is Pierre Bertrand. I might have filled out my name in one system, but another name, another one used Pierre. Third one, Pierre H. Bertrand. My email address might be common. So if I create a matching rule, we're able to look across a different set of tables and say, you know what? These two things look pretty similar. And we found a matching email address, so we'll match the records together. So this last logical step thing that you could do is to merge duplicate records together to create a single profile that you need to look at. So if I go one step further, so the matching section allows you to set up the rules that describe how to handle the matching. So for example, the email is matched to the first name. You can specify what precision level you're looking at to achieve. So for example, for the email, is it a perfect match? Do you need to contain, does it need to contain the first name or the last name, et cetera? So you can specify some of the rules you want, and this will show on an ongoing basis the impact on the percentage of records matched. So you have a lot of flexibility there to fine tweak the rules and increase your matching uh, percentage. Obviously, uh, the, um, that depends on the number of data sources you have, but it's, it's very easy to do uh, right now on the system. So at this point, the data analyst is done. Once the data sources have been set up and you've got your matching set, there's no more data analysts required. Now this is, uh, he's, he's created basically all the different sources, the one profile you're set, but there's more work to do. So at this point, it's actionable from a business oriented perspective. Now, let me take you back to the Tivoli story with their annual subscription challenge. So that's, that's really where it, it, it hits the, uh, his reality. So one of the first thing that the business wanted to look at was customers or members located in Denmark and who have a churn of 70%, a churn rate of 70%, churn score, sorry. So if you have a high churn score, that means you're likely to churn, you're likely to leave. And you have a low churn score, that means you're likely to remain. So how does a churn score get calculated? Well, there's, here's where the AI comes in again. So the AI model runs over the segmentation, segmented data and produces a score. So in the case of Tivoli, it was about if a customer was located in Denmark, where they visited the gardens four times a year, what rides did they go on, what social information did they post, etc. And four times a day, this model is updated. So Tivoli ran a churn model on this data and they started to visualize it for the board of directors. So information was good, but what did marketing do with it? Well, marketing zoomed in on two specific segments. And this is real data from Tivoli, but we anonymized it so that we wouldn't see specific uh, people in there. So we're going to be looking at Veronica as an example, but she represents a segment they looked at. So here's Veronica. But it's, as I mentioned, it's really one segment they looked at. So if you have a CRM system, you'll have to admit that it's difficult to get this kind of 360 degree view of a customer unified across all your multiple systems. So look at the churn score in the middle of the panel. This is an ideal customer, an ideal segment. We have a 12% churn score, which is very low. So as marketing, if you run activities against these low churn segments, you don't have a real-time feedback on the impact of, on churn, engagement, fulfillment, dollar spends, etc. So you run campaigns, you run offers, and you can see the impact on these low churn uh, segments. If you see the churn starts to creep up a bit, then you see, oh, we've got a problem, let's back off on those offers, something is happening. That gives you real-time feedback, oh, four to five times a day, on the impact of what you're doing on your expected churn score. Let's look at Niels, who represents another segment. So Niels has a high churn score, 95.8%, and you can see the very low engagement. So, he only went to one concert. So every Friday night, Tivoli Gardens has a concert. So what they did is because of the rock concert that he attended, or the fact that the people in this segment attended a rock concert, and to the high churn score, marketing sent an automated promotion out to the mobile devices. So think of an amusement park. They have uh, wide open areas where they have concerts. So people are just standing or sitting on the grass. It's a very low cost to have extra people attend a concert for free. So that was a promotion. They also want to attract other customers. So they said you can bring a friend for free to this concert. And while you're at it, we'll give you a free beer. 
So that was a promotion that they they send to the folks in this segment. Before I go to the next slide, a couple of interesting things here. You can see bottom left, it shows you all the data sources for this segment. So all your information for your segments are all here in one spot. So fast forward, we see an activity moment that Niels attended the AHA concert on the right. So attended the AHA concert, we see that here, brought a friend and got the beer. So what does that actually mean? As I mentioned earlier, the churn score is being calculated over and over and over again, four times per day. So it went from 95% down to about 40% due to the engagement he took with them. That's the power the insights can give you. You can unify the customer profile. It'll give you next best, next best actions. You can predict with AI models what's gonna happen, such as churn, risk of fraud, whatever you wanna be doing. And it can infuse that into the business process of a sales rep, a customer service professional, or a marketing professional. That covers some of the key items that we have for our Tivoli 